Hey, what's up guys? Short video today, but I found this cool new free keyword research tool that I want to show you in this video. It's very straightforward, very easy to use. So I'm going to kind of give you an example of how I might go about using it when I'm launching new products. If I'm not 100% sure like what keywords to maybe prioritize in the title or I'm looking for extra words to get indexed on in the bullet points or especially where I think it would be useful is if you take time to set up manual ads and you need to provide uh, keywords and long tail keywords like phrases to associate with uh, your new listing. So that's what we're gonna get out of this tool. Let's get to it. So guys, this is how I may go about using the tool. I'll probably start with Pretty Merch Pro Plus just to find a trending niche, right? So how about this Oktoberfest shirt? Uh, and just a reminder too, Pretty Merch Pro Plus gives us a keyword analysis. So it gives us one word, two word, and three word phrases when there are applicable uh, phrases to use. But in this case, okay, Oktoberfest shirts are trending. So I'm going to come on over to Keyword Sheeter, S-H-E-E-T-E-R. And I do believe that is meant to be uh, funny, like a play on words. But you can come here. I'll link to it in the description. You don't need to register an account. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to pay uh, there is a paid version, but I've never used it and you can come straight to the tool and just type in, you know, Oktoberfest shirt. Now, if you don't put the word shirt, you're going to get a lot of additional, like it's much more open-ended, right? You're gonna get a lot of, uh, less targeted phrases, but by putting the word shirt, it's going to kind of refine and it's not perfect. Like it's going to also still get some, you know, uh, unrelated to shirt phrases for us, but uh, by putting shirt, it's going to refine it more and reduce a lot of the clutter. But if I just want to sell something related to Oktoberfest, like, you know what I mean? Oktoberfest products or something, then you can just say Oktoberfest and hit start. But what I did is I typed in Oktoberfest shirt. I will zoom in. I'm going to click start sheeting and you can see that it just goes and I believe it pulls from Google's autocomplete to get all of these suggestions. Okay. So it's basically doing the data mining for us. And when people ask me about how to find keywords and whatnot. I mean, I typically just say go straight to Google or Amazon and use the autocomplete from the search function. Now, if you can go and have this tool expedite that process for you, um, why not, right? Especially when it's free. So you can just let it run and uh, we'll come back and we'll revisit this, but I just wanted to show you, I had queued up this demo um, before I started recording. And again, just went to Pretty Merch Pro Plus, uh, found you know a trending shirt that says coolest pumpkin in the patch. By the way, I love that font that they used. Um, that is super cool. Uh, so I was like, all right, let's find some keywords for this. And I kind of ran some tests with Keyword Sheeter. So I typed in coolest pumpkin on the first one and you can see it basically auto-completed and said in the patch, coolest pumpkin in the patch SVG, uh, coolest pumpkin carvings, coolest pumpkin patches near me. So if you don't give it that extra word that says like, oh, product type, you know, shirt, um, it's going to go and kind of branch out into other, you know, auto completed. Well, auto complete is reflecting what people have actually typed into Google's search engine. So you can see like it go then transitions to cool pumpkin carvings, best pumpkin ale, cool pumpkin pie. So uh, you definitely want to refine it a little bit. So here on this next one, I actually typed in coolest pumpkin in the patch. So I added the in the patch just to see what it came up with. Uh, came up with the SVG. So clearly people are looking for that SVG. People that want, you know, they want a design maybe like this one. Uh, and, you know, I mean, I know people are ambivalent about selling the design itself and selling the design on products. I just like making money. So if I had a really like popular trending design, I may just like go to Etsy and list it for, I don't know, five bucks, 10 bucks, et cetera, because who cares what I'll, whether I sell it on a shirt or the design file itself, as long as that money's hitting my bank account. Uh, that's how I feel about it anyways. Um, so you can see here then it coolest pumpkin in the patch, then kind of transitions into best pumpkin patch, best pumpkin patch, et cetera. So there isn't always, there isn't always like some great hidden keywords that we will, if we use the right tool or if we pay for the right upgrade, all of a sudden stumble upon. Like sometimes we sell a shirt that says coolest pumpkin in the patch and the most relevant keywords are coolest pumpkin in the patch. Like sometimes it is that simple, you know? Um, so here I typed in pumpkin shirt. All right. Just to really cast a bri uh, broad wide net. And this is something where you can actually take some of these and move them over to a manual campaign, like on Amazon. And just because they're so broad, maybe 
low bids is what I'm thinking. Like you don't need to spend a lot of money on pumpkin shirt because you know, yeah, you do have a, what's technically a pumpkin shirt, but this may not be what someone is looking for. They may want like a pumpkin themed like shirt costume with just the jack-o'-lantern face on or something. You know what I mean? They could want something completely different. Um, so I wouldn't like recommend overspending. Uh, I'd say the coolest pumpkin in the patch is, as a sub niche of, you know, pumpkin shirts or Halloween shirts is validated as a niche and you can use pretty merch pro plus to kind of refine and, and do that research, um, and expedite it to, to see that, you know, Hey, there is demand in this niche, or, or I think you can actually pay for a uh, keyword sheeter. And it looks like if you pay 90 a month, yeah, 90 a month, they'll give you a uh, search volume for 30,000 words per day. So that's actually pretty crazy. Uh, or actually, it looks like you get search volume for 49 a month here too. I mean, I'm not planning on upgrading. I'm just trying to tell you guys that it's there. Um, so anyways, pumpkin shirt. Uh, and you can see like, oh, pumpkin shirt for baby. Pumpkin shirt baby boy. Pumpkin shirt baby costume. So this may not like set in as something that you would have thought of initially. But, you know, obviously like Google engineers, anybody who can access their database and see what people are searching for have a huge edge because they're basically getting this crazy massive amount of data collected on their servers that's being volunteered by everybody that's ever used Google. Like they say, every time someone searches something in Google, it, the algorithms get a little bit smarter. They get a little bit better. And that's what they mean. They're learning from people's tendencies, right? And they can reorder and adjust um, autocomplete and, and search results in general based on what we're searching. So this is, you know, going and aggregating a lot of that data based on the seed word or seed phrase we provide in Keyword Sheeter and giving us additional uh, relevant keywords based on what people have like opted to click in Google. You know what I mean? Like the autocomplete is relevant. It's based on user interactions. So if Google autocomplete is always adjusting itself to be better based on end user interactions, and this is grabbing and aggregating all the information from Google's autocomplete, uh, it is pretty relevant information. But of course, like I just wanted to illustrate there, it's not perfect. You know, you can definitely see a shift in the results based on what information you provide as the seed so take that into account as well. All right, let's go back on over to um, where we were. By the way, there's a stop button. Otherwise, it'll just run and run and run, okay? There's actually a different um, Amazon-specific keyword tool called the Scientific Seller. That's another favorite one of mine. Maybe I'll do a separate video on that, but I found it most useful for FBA. Um, but anyways, that is, it's very similar where it's like a slow, it's a slow keyword tool. You just set it, you let it search, and you just leave it, and it'll just keep going and going and going and grab you tons of keywords. But um, so you can see here, Oktoberfest shirt, Oktoberfest shirt women's, Oktoberfest shirt ideas, Oktoberfest shirts near me, Oktoberfest shirt design. So it's giving you kind of ideas of what phrases or like what long tail keywords to prioritize when you're setting your title. You know, like in my title, when I'm doing Amazon merch, I like to do at least two phrases that someone would search in the Amazon search bar. And ideally, it's never going to be an exact match, right? An exact match in the title would actually be me typing the word Oktoberfest and, you know, Amazon merch automatically appends the product. So in this case, shirt, and then someone goes to Amazon and types in Oktoberfest shirt. Boom. That's an exact match. But if I do Oktoberfest shirt women's comma Oktoberfest uh, shirt funny, you know what I mean? I may get a phrase match, but if I don't get the exact match of what they type into the search bar, it won't count. So hopefully you guys get where I'm going with that. Um, this is still a great idea for number one, just product ideas. Number two, keywords that you may want to include in the listing organic for organic ranking and search engine optimization. But then number three, where I'm going to say this is probably most useful is going to be um, phrases that you can match on for your manual ad campaigns because you can provide the keywords and phrases yourself. Um, and look, you're even getting into like different languages and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool uh, as well because those are that's not something I would ever think of or you know what I mean? Sometimes if I'm really confident in a product or if it's an FBA product and I do want to be ranked on, you know, for the bilingual people or, or people speaking other um, languages than English, that's something I'll do. But for, you know, ads, not something I typically do. Anyways, guys, check it out. Uh, it's free. So the link's at the top of the description. I hope you found this video useful. Uh, please like and subscribe and I'll see you tomorrow with a new video.